Hello, my name is Paul Virgo, and I'm a climate reality leader. Climate reality is an international network of um, activists, and we're trying to promote awareness of the climate crisis and also push for solutions to the climate crisis and for greater climate justice, because we believe that um, you can't solve the climate crisis unless you solve the, the, the justice issues that, uh, that are causing the climate crisis. You can't have one without the other. Um, we started to do a series of interviews to talk to some of our climate reality leaders um, so that they can, so we can show you what we're doing, how we're trying to do our bit um, to, to achieve these goals. Um, and today uh, we're talking to Roberta Centonzi, who's a very clever lady, and she's going to tell you who she is, what she does, and um, how she came to become a climate reality leader. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I'm okay. glad to be here. And um, yes, climate uh, reality leadership is, uh, is, for me, it's really a honor to, to, to wear this uh, green ring sometimes when we manage to, to be together, not much in the last two years, but it's anyway um, very good that you mentioned all the values we actually believe in and that the reason why we try to be active as, as much as we can. Um, so my professional profile is, um, I'm an agronomist, an agricultural economist actually, and I used to work into a European project um, design and management project related to food, agriculture, environment and climate change. Um, the, in 2018, I worked for a very short period for the uh, Climate Kick community in Bologna. Uh, actually, I already had the chance to, to meet this community uh, a couple of, year, of years earlier, so in 2016, if I remember correctly, because I was a climate pioneer. So this kind of climate challenge uh, um, really interested me um, uh, because I, I found that it's very related to my work activities, my interests, and maybe the range of my competencies. And um, what I, I, I try to do is just to insert uh, as much as I can um, a bit of consciousness uh, about climate crisis into my daily life and into my activities. Okay. So in 2018, I was in Berlin. Uh, it was the first um, uh, training uh, opportunities for the European people. Uh, well, not for the European people, but in Europe. Uh, of course, many uh, Europeans already uh, had been to uh, US. Um, and we were trained personally by Al Gore. That was very impressive for me because I could notice the difference from uh, this uh, approach, this American US style approach in the, uh, you know, in the venue and the sounds and the colors and all the stage, how it was uh, prepared. But actually it was um, um, full, I mean, it was a training uh, period, I think a couple of days or three, I don't remember exactly, but it was uh, full of enthusiasm, very uh, accurate presentations, uh, full of data spanning all of, over the world. And it was also impressing for me because they really managed to produce uh, a lot of interesting information, which you could not recall immediately, but they, of course, they give you the source. To, to, to know more and more about it. So the first uh, key point is, of course, consciousness, knowledge. Try to be more and more conscious of, of what is going on. And I think climate reality um, leadership also um, asks you to invent uh, different ways to present these challenges wherever you are, whatever you do. And with um, in, in, the, in the environments that, that suit you best that that's it okay yeah that's um that's very interesting that's that's certainly what i found the, the training was very stimulating um it really some of the things i was aware of but the way it was brought across uh, helped me touch me and help me realize how important it is also to communicate it and to try and make the climate crisis an issue that is not just in your head but it's also in your heart so give some stories about it and 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 you know at that level as well um 
we as climate reality leaders are called on to um, to do what is called an acts of leadership to help promote awareness and help promote change. Um, could you explain what they give some examples of what they are and maybe tell us about some acts of leadership that you can please revert? Um, well, I have quite an intense uh, life from, I mean, job related, family related. So what I really tried many times was to be active into the specific activities that the climate leadership, other, other climate leaders were proposing. So I managed to be active a few times, but not that much as I wanted to. So in the end, I think my main activities are really my daily life. So I am a mom and I try to, um, you know, to, to raise my kids with um, due uh, consciousness and knowledge. Um, it's not just up to me, of course, it's also up to them. But this is an attempt I always bear in my uh, daily behavior. So I think activism is also this. And in professional life, well, uh, what, what, well oh, we live in Berlin and it's also easy not to have a car. I sold it when we moved here, mm -hmm. uh, which is something I really consider a huge step towards uh, interdependency, uh, understanding of how common goods can be used effectively mm -hmm. when it's possible, of course and can be shared and can be cared for, uh, paying the ticket, for example, and not just free riding. Okay. Uh, I mean, these are just small acts that I think in Italy would really need to be uh, thought about. Yeah. Um, but, but small things. And in my, I mean, in my job, in my daily activity, I, I don't try, I have never tried, and it's my headache not to try and, and take advantage of from being a climate leader not at all it's the other way around i uh, try to uh, of course um insert fill all my uh day-by-day -day activities with these ideas with this concept so what i do is first of all try and understand the baseline where are we where are my clients or the people i meet into works context positioned um uh, in relationship with this issue. Mm -hmm. So there are projects in which the issue is climate change. For example, I was involved in projects where um, a group of scientists all over Europe uh, were, was asked to monitor the decrease of grains production due to climate change. So the solar radiation is different, the amount of water and the distribution of water during the year is different. Um, what else? So that the, the soil fertility is different due to also um, phenomenon related to climate change and air pollution. Okay, there it's easy because the, the main um, aim of the project is really to understand what is the impact of climate change. So the challenge for me was trying to communicate this concept also to farmers which maybe are observing the change, but they're not really uh, aware Making of... Making the link, maybe, the yeah. Mm. Yes, exactly. So, and this is not just my personal challenge, of course, it's a challenge of, for the project itself, but my, my activity was related to stakeholders' involvement, and so finding the way to communicate and help people observing the key performance indicators no? with respect to this kind of, of phenomenon. Um, what else? Other projects I've been involved in are related to the food shift in Europe. I mean, one was really called food shift. And um, it's like, uh, uh, let's observe how the diet habits can, habits can change in Europe from meat-based diet to plant-based diet. And specifically, one of the projects were, was related to this shift, this food shift in, into the public canteens all over the northern European areas, all over the northern countries in Europe, Baltic Sea area. So, you know, my, my work can be really highly related. But now working with the small municipalities, it's not that different because, for example, we work for the appreciation of um, old villages in the um, rural areas of Italy. So, okay, we have this big, fantastic city that is Rome, and then we have a lot of small places, mainly abandoned, especially when they are in the hills, you know? So what do we do with this? Um, how can we find these places attractive any longer? First of all, 
We need to know them. We need to know what is really going on. Are they really abandoned? Or there is some kind of economic activity going on? And can we rely on this activity? Can we propose this activity to young people? Is digitization helping, for example, to allow people move, moving there and work as digital nomads, which is a concept, you know, which yeah. we could also exploit to, um, to make the territory again uh, lively. Yeah. But again, you go into a rural area and then what about all the logistics you need? So sustainability and going towards um, a, a change in trends uh, in favor of climate is not that trivial, is not that obvious. Sustainability, we were mentioning this before the interview, it's always a trade-off. Yeah. Where, when, where you need to understand what is the best solution in that place at that time, considering all the interests at stake. Okay. This yeah. is fascinating, but of course yeah. complex. And I think we need to accept that we will make mistakes. So it's not a fight uh, one against the other. It's just um, try to bear this in mind and, you know, in our um, inner perspective in order to bring it up as easy as possible, as fair as possible. Not everyone is fair, we know that, but at least try to work for, you know, to work okay. for this common uh, perspective. And yeah. this is where my hope is, actually. <laughs> okay. uh, this is my real source of hope. Uh, I, I don't know whether you agree with me. I mean, um, one thing that I think is that the climate solutions we we implement do not have to necessarily be the same everywhere. You know, if you know some parts of the world want to be sustainable in certain ways, and other parts of the world might not want to be sustainable. There's no one one uh, one size fits all solution. I think, and the the world is beautiful. It can, and it's you know, humans have their faults, but they can be very inventive. You know, if we could, um, you know, exploit different ways of being, you know, being sustainable and being in, be in better harmony with the planet. Do you, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think also you, you, we can't impose anything. Mm. You know, we have this fantastic treasure, which is democracy. And we always, of course, we want to keep it. And um we, we, I think it, it, it is implemented at best uh, if we increase knowledge, but also consciousness. I mean, it's not just knowledge of the scientific things. It's also no, knowledge. And I think that the new generations are really going into that direction, mm. knowing themselves. Uh, some trends I have uh, noticed in, in, in Europe, I mean, in this northern part of Europe, is that young people don't want to work. 40 hours a week any longer. This is a change of climate, isn't it? Mm. I mean, the climate of work, of out intent, the work life is yeah. different. And they also want to be more relaxed, to have more time for themselves. Okay, uh, looking from the perspective of the boomers, maybe this is not good at all. Why you don't want to work that exactly, much? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, what is this? We have been. You've got to be productive, it. yeah. But at the same time, uh, this allows us also to, you know, again, a trade-off. Do I want to earn more money, as much money as I can? Or do I also value my time, my free time, and not necessarily with kids, not necessarily with a home of property, not necessarily with a wife? Because all these paradigms are shifting, and I don't know exactly where they're going. I think no one knows. Um, but maybe there are cultural models that could support the rural living, like with this community life. I mean, it's not easy. We're not talking about, you know, a pink world where, yeah. where everybody agrees on everything. But we need really to be open to new models of um, business, but also of life because yeah. it's interconnected and people know that. I mean, it's not just one size fits all, as you were mentioning, not even in this business model. And yeah. digitization can help us to, to be more creative, but at the same time, and it will, will come up at a certain point, the calculation of the cost and the environmental costs of all this digital world. 
Mm. But again, being conscious, this is possible. Otherwise, um, we, we just look for the next solution and, yeah. you know, the, the next lie, maybe. I think you but, touched on some of it in the, personally, for what it's worth, in my opinion, is, is, is an important thing about uh, the climate crisis is that maybe we often think about it as sacrifices, but sometimes it can be good things. It can be like slowing down and enjoying life and working less could be part of a, a way forward in that if we slow down, enjoy life, savor things more, um, wouldn't just be, okay, we're not just doing it for the planet. I mean, that's necessary. It's not just to save humanity. But there's no, it's also, you know, about having a great time, enjoying people, enjoying your time, enjoying your family, enjoying your friends. Yeah. Anyway, for what I, it's worth. <laughs> yeah, I, I really think this is worth, I think this is where happiness is, even mm. if I, um, I struggle to pronounce this H, sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> I think, Happiness is there. I mean, we, we all want to be happy, don't we? Yeah, and we do indeed. And I love that H. 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 Very nice. H. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One day I will book a lesson, <laughs> a private lesson for me, just for this, you know. It's very important. And all the rest will come. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, okay, I'd, I'd like to just get it back to a, a personal level um, again. I, yeah. <laughs> Um, because um, we said, um, is the, the climate crisis, I wonder if you, you've touched you personally, professionally, or in your own personal life, or I guess maybe even, you know, as a parent, that, that the climate crisis may have touched you in, in, pers- in ways that have, you know, hit home to your heart, and, as well as your, you know, as, as well as your work and statistics and, and crop yields and things like that. Well, as a person, I think uh, this this crisis, which is so huge, you know, it's so um, impacting on our lives. It, it, of course, it does affect, but it affects also in uh, continuously asking myself, is this still okay? I mean, can I still do this? Is this a behavior that I still can keep or should I really consider it differently mm. i don't know for example i'm italian and uh, we used to to collect clothes don't we I mean, we have a lot of clothes <laughs> and a lot of uh, uh, shoes well why not uh well first in berlin i have to say that heels heels help me please you know heels, heels. you've got a good h again yeah yeah <laughs> they are <laughs> actually not suitable because Again, I don't have a car any longer, so okay. it's really, uh, we, we, I think I cut my shoes collection in half. Okay. And, uh, but this is, you know, to be more sustainable, not having a car. I mean, you have to do certain choices. This might be stupid or just, uh, you know, silly to think about this, but it's how it is. And uh, what did I do with the other shoes? shoes well part of it are of course in italy because you never know a summer evening it's nice but okay. uh, part of them are you know in the thrift market to give them for free because maybe they move a different economy yeah and um thrift market are also nice places to go shopping yeah yeah I agree. and uh, yeah to give your to give your staff there uh it's so cheap and it's also good for example if you like to bring someone there if you see or to buy something from there to, to give to someone that you see on the street that might be in need. What does it have to be with climate change? Well, I think the climate that really has to change is more here, mm. you know, as you were saying. So for what do we get high temperature? What is really giving us all the passion, all the emotions? What? I mean, how can we change the climate in, in, in our uh, workspaces, in our families? What, what do we care for? Uh, I think it's really um, a boost for changing patterns that give us unhappiness. And um, I mean, I, I'm also a believer. So I think that uh, we are meant to live for basic, simple things. Um, I, I, of course, it's, uh, I mean, our network, is, is not to do with relig- has nothing to do with religion but if you look at the ten commandments are they called the same way in english yes that's perfect yeah okay then i mean they're so simple and it's just uh, living peace no and uh, to me they are not um 
they're not meant to um, prevent us from doing things which we may desire to do, but it's more trying to do things which are really rooted in our nature in the way we, we could find happiness. I, and again, I have trust in two future generations, although, um, of course, I think our role is very important to help them know what they, they don't have any longer uh, available. So they, they don't have available uh, certain experience. We enjoy it. They don't even know what they are. And I think our role as parents um, is really try to make them experience this kind of, of things like being in contact with nature in the way we used to be, you know. But for us, it was something too simple to enjoy. Now we also have a new awareness the more it is simple, the more it is close to reality and give, uh, the more it gives us the chance to know ourselves, to know our limits. And if you know your limits, you can also understand other people's limits, understand each other and understand that the planet has got limits. So you, you can't just, you know, go over and over. But yeah, education, I think, um, okay. is, yeah. Roberta, I, I really enjoyed your comments because I think um, you, you touched on some very profound things that really get to the to the to the to, to the heart of the question. Um, I'd like to wrap things up with one one quick question, um, which is, um, you know, the climate movement's come up with some really great slogans: people, not profit; <laughs> no more blah blah blah; um, system change, yeah. not climate change. Things like. Do you have a favorite slogan or a favorite quote from the, the climate movement that's produced? Yes, I'll take the chance to, to, to quote this one, which is not for, from uh, climate um, reality leaders or this kind of movements, but it's, it's a movie, it's Don't Look Up. Okay. Yes. <laughs> from Adam McKay with Leonardo DiCaprio and a lot of other uh, yeah. wonderful uh, yeah, performers. I mean, don't look up. It's really like, please incre increase your awareness, your knowledge. Just don't, you know, sometimes we really live in a, in a big show with all this <laughs> social media and we just need to be fit enough for, for any performance. Like it's not a performance. So let's just, let's leave. Come on, let's leave. So, I mean, again, any, any belief uh, is fine if it's um, towards happiness and trying to be really um, in, in, a good, in a good shape, in a good word, caring for each other. I think climate change is that because we caused, uh, it was our greed creating this imbalances, economic, social, environmental, health related. Okay. This is my approach. I, I think it's too uh, um, general, maybe too broad, but it, it was most, this is what moves me, actually. Okay. Thank you for talking to me. Uh, I've really enjoyed our chat. Um, Thank you. Thank we'll, you to the Italian team. Um, I, I, I will never say um, thanks enough to Paola. I think Paola is really a good example of human being. Team Italy it, leader, pa Dr. Paola Fiore. Yes. Yes, uh, Dr. Paola Fiore, uh, I think she is a great example of human being able to, you know, welcome everyone, appreciate any contribution, yeah. value any experience from the youngest to the oldest. She is, I think, a great leader for us. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I, I wish to thank her, to thank her. I, I hope that this this piece will not be cut because I think she deserves all of our gratitude and respect. Okay. Okay. And I would like to uh, echo those statements. I think Paula is fantastic too. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to wrap it up here. Um, just to say that, you know, we, we would encourage anybody who's interested in the climate crisis to seek information, try and do something about it uh, in whatever way you can. There's lots of small gestures that can make a difference. You know, there's no gesture that it's too small. Um, get involved, talk about it. If you can get involved in activism. And if you think that, you know, 
people like uh, Roberta here are extremely cool and you want to come and join us, you know, there are opportunities to join the climate reality movement. So uh, we'd love to have you all. OK, well, thank you again and uh, have a nice evening. Enjoy your evening. Bye. <laughs>